There are many amazing things that happen in the steelworks, from uh, making iron in the blast furnaces to casting it in the continuous casters and even the, the rolling process and downstream processes. But there's always amazing things going on behind the scenes or unseen. And uh, today we've come down to the rail operations in the Patalbert site, uh, where they are trialling a new technology, never done before in Tata Steel, uh, that we're aware of, um, which is about improving the quality of the rails uh, while saving money in not having to replace them. So to get a bit more detail about what's going on here, joined by Richard Davis uh, engineer, from Engineering, Rail Engineering. Richard, uh, we've got a machine behind us, we've just seen it going up and down the rails, but uh, tell us what's going on here. Yeah, so the rail track obviously uh, wears with time, um, and as we've seen, it's sort of the metal flows, it doesn't really wear away. So what we're trying to do with this uh, rail grinding machine behind us is to bring the profile back to where it needs to be, back to standard. Uh, there's many benefits, A, extending the life, getting the best from it, uh, but predominantly for us, it's getting the profile back to where it needs to be. Yeah, because there's, what, 25 kilometres of rail just on the Patalbert site, you were saying earlier, and uh, obviously that is expensive to replace, uh, and you were telling me the size of some of these costs, and the option is, instead of replacing it, is to, to, to reprofile it. Would that be a fair description? That's it, yeah. So we're, it's worn to a certain point where we need to take some kind of action. Um, in the past, we may have uh, just replaced the rail at great cost. It's £1,500 per 60-foot length. Um, and this machine, we're trying to a little bit of a proof of concept, really, see how far we can get, how many metres in per day. We're trying to achieve 800 metres to 1,000, uh, and that will save us in the region of £140,000 on just by not replacing rail at an outlay of four and a half thousand pound per shift so wow that is quite an impressive uh, figure isn't it it's quite an impressive saving um now that machine behind us it looks fairly straightforward but you're telling me that's a million quid's worth of kit yeah um some would be disappointed in that i think it doesn't look like a million pounds worth but uh yeah the, the whole technology like the drivers themselves say they've invested nothing in the cab but it's all in the brains for the plcs and everything inside but yeah, it's really working out well for us so far. Yeah, and it is quite impressive, isn't it, when you look at it and you see inside and you see all that electronic equipment. And I know there's some measuring instruments around the site as well. Uh, and it's not just a case of getting an angle grinder and, and grinding it down. It's actually highly technical and highly important. What's the implication in terms of operational safety and cost for the business? So if we get it wrong, uh, you could be left with rail defects, which could lead to fractures, which is something we don't want. Obviously, what we're trying to do is combine the ultrasonic scanning, which we have Sperry, another out, um, outside company in, align them to the, to the requirements of what we can do with the rail grinding. So we've got a really good preventative maintenance plan in place now going forward. So the proof of concept, as I mentioned, with the grinding is working out great so far, and we're hopefully going to ex extend on that. So it's a first here. We're trialling it here over, as you said, about 800 metres to see how it goes and uh, and whether it works OK. But another first for our site, and I'm going to bring in a, a colleague of yours, uh, Enyo. Another first is having a rail engineering graduate. Enyo, welcome to the business. I know you've been here a few months. How's it going? Yeah, doing good. Thank you very much. Very much and what have you been working on since you've been here and uh, kind of what's your background and what are you looking forward to contributing so yeah um, I graduated my my master's um, advanced engineering management in University of Birmingham originally I, I did civil engineering in Swansea University so yeah um, graduated in December and joined the team in March and I've been here for four months now and um, I've just been gaining um, experience with the boys on track tar. Uh, obviously I don't have a rail background but it's really good getting some knowledge from, from uh, the tar people and especially contractors you know um, at the moment we've just got Hasco Rail our first time um, and as, as well as um, Sperry they test uh, non-destructive testing on site and then at the moment we've got SCP Rail who do our switch uh, SNCs which are switches and turnouts but yeah that's what I've been doing uh, so far. Yeah, and, and Richard, just coming back to you briefly, you know, it's a big old task you've got here. How important is it to bring youngsters through like Enyo to help with this amazing network we've got on our site? Oh, definitely. You've got to pass the knowledge and sort of skills and experiences on. So it's really good that we've had uh, sort of approval from the business to recruit a graduate, which is really positive for the future. But yeah, it'll all be in his hands before long now, and uh, we'll see what goes from there. But so if this is successful now over this sort of uh, next few days, this rail grinding, what's the potential of this? I think there's massive potential for us to put Talbot, also Llanwyrn, but also downstream sites. So we share our sort of knowledge and skills with the likes of Trostre, um, and there's a lot of scope to sort of reprofile and extend the life of the rails down there rather than replacement. So it's good for the well, good for us, good for the uh, well, the go green as well. So it's a positive all round. Yeah, because we're linked up to the main line here, aren't we? And uh, I guess the standards here have to be as good, if not better, than the main line. 
Definitely, yeah. So we've got uh, main line going down the south, also Llanwen, the same, and Trostre. So the implications are we don't want any defects so sort of picking up on our site and transferring to the main line because there's massive potentials with fines and safety as well. So we want to make sure our site is the best it can be. Yeah, and I know you were saying to me earlier that this is actually more complex than the external rail network because they have long, long lengths of, uh, of rail without much going on and, and it seems every hundred or so yards here we've got some sort of crossover or joint or whatever. How complex does it get? It's by far the most complicated you'll see for a, well, throughout the UK, I believe. So we have circa, so as we mentioned, over 25 kilometres of track. Within that, we have over uh, two, well, 205 turnouts. Uh, so that works out an average of one, one, well, eight and a half turnouts per kilometres of track. And you align that to network rail, they have one for one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, really, so the high risk part we got <laughs> far too many of. But that's why we've got all the contractor support to really make sure our standards are where they need to be. Yeah, it's a brilliant piece of work and I know it doesn't look much to look at it but uh, I've seen inside the cab, we've seen the technology that goes on behind it and the, and the, and the level of detail for the profiling of the rail which is critically important uh, for all of the logistics on site is, uh, is quite something to behold and uh, you know, good luck for the trial, hope it goes well to you and, uh, and we look forward to seeing it rolling out across the site. Oh, thanks very much for that Tim, thank you.